Hello, I'm Andre Simpson, and today we're going to talk about the straight line method of depreciation. I'm very excited because we just got some mail in. This letter here is from a staff accountant. I'm not going to say the I won't say the person name because I never do that. I'm always happy to help you in any way, shape, or form. You can grow in your job as an accountant because lots of people have helped me along the way, so I'm always happy to help. It says here, Dear Andre, I notice you're doing a series on depreciation. Can you explain to me the straight line method of depreciation and how is it handled at the end of the month? Okay, all right. So well, let us do that. First of all, I wanna recap real quick. The last time I said that depreciation is allocating the value of the asset over its useful life. So what does that mean? If that means that the value of the asset if it's six to five hundred dollars and the value of it six to five hundred and the useful life is five years that means I'm going to allocate the value of this asset over its useful life but if you notice I've left something missing here well after the five years it's going to have a salvage value well let us assume that the salvage value is five hundred dollars So the formula, I'm going to give it to you now, is cost minus salvage value divided by useful life. Having done that, we should arrive at $1,200 per year for depreciation expense. Now, if this is $1,200 per year for your depreciation expense, here is how you're going to handle that. You're going to make a journal entry of $100 per month. So the first one is depreciation expense. That's going to flow through to your income statement as an expense. The second one here is going to be accumulated depreciation. Now, the accumulated depreciation, that is going to go directly to your balance sheet. Now, I just want to give a, a, a brief point. Today, we're just going to talk about how depreciation expense affects the income statement and the balance sheet. In a later video, I'm going to give you a full walkthrough of all the financial statements affected and then we'll show you where that goes on the cash statement to cash flow. So I haven't forgotten it, but just for now, we want to give this accountant who wrote me the letter just a way to handle what's on her plate and then we'll follow up. So I, I want to get this video to her as soon as possible. So here we go. This is going to go to the balance sheet. And on the balance sheet, your fixed assets are shown net of depreciation. So what that means is that this $6,500 you paid for the car is going to be here, but it's going to be net of accumulated depreciation. So it's going to show up on the balance sheet as being having a book value of $6,400. So every month you're going to make these journal entries here. You're going to debit depreciation expense and you're going to credit accumulated depreciation. That's going to come to your balance sheet here. And that's going to reduce the net value of the asset and this will come here to your income statement so every month you're doing this what's going to happen is that this account right here this account is going to grow accumulated depreciation at the end of the year we'll have a balance of 1200 dollars and this amount right here will actually have a balance of 5300 dollars and every year, this amount in the balance sheet will keep going down. And the accumulated depreciation will keep going up. And then at the end of the five year, five years, year five, the balance, the, the book value that's going to be remaining, the residual value will be equal to the $500. So I'm going to put the numbers up top here real fast for you. 
This is the recap. Remember, we paid $6,500 for it. The salvage value was 500 and the useful life was five years. We calculated that $1,200 per month, sorry, $1,200 per year is a depreciation of the vehicle. And $100 per month is the depreciation expense. We then made the general interest here. Debited depreciation expense, credited accumulated depreciation. That goes here, and this goes here. Where is here? This is the balance sheet. This is the income statement. Accumulated depreciation reduces the value of the asset. It brings it down. Fixed assets are always shown net of depreciation on your balance sheet. This will go to your income statement as an expense. Now, hopefully that helps. I want you to go ahead and do the journal entry. And the good thing about that is that no matter what operating system you're using, no matter what accounting system you're using, whether it's QuickBooks, Procast, or Deltec, you can always go ahead and void or delete a journal entry. So make the journal entry, then run your income statement, run your balance sheet, run your statement of cash flows, and these items, they should show up on them. Then look them over, okay? And then I wanna also point out that there's a difference between tax depreciation and book depreciation. So be very careful with that. Don't assume that you can use your last year's uh, tax return and look at the depreciation schedule that your CPA provided and then put those numbers in because tax depreciation uses makers and book depreciation uses the different methods. So let us, you know, I want to make that distinction because I, I see that a lot. But in your case, this information I just gave you, that should be very helpful. Thank you so much for sending me the email. I appreciate it. Follow up with me. Let me know how it turned out. Thanks again and have a nice day.